Hey guys, this is going to be part of my review series on the AP exam. It's really going to be just reviewing all of the course. And I'm just going to take it one topic at a time. So I'm starting way back at the beginning, unit one, topic one, one, moles and molar mass. This seems like it's going to be pretty simple because it's something that we use all the time, but it's going to be nice just kind of go over the basics again and maybe you'll realize why exactly I always use dimensional analysis because it works. It keeps everything nice and clean. You can go through and find this particular uh, PDF. It has all of the different topics, not only that, but it tells you everything that you should know, just kind of what your objective is for this particular topic, different things that you should no. For example, here they're talking about Avogadro's number. In this one, you know, we can't directly count number of atoms because I don't want to count individual atoms. It's hard to count individual atoms. So we can use Avogadro's number and we can look at the mass of a particular atom as an atomic mass unit, AMU, because we don't know which particular isotope we're going to be looking at. So this is going to be kind of what I'm going to be talking about. First off, why do we care so much about a mole? What is exactly a mole? Well, remember, a mole is just a, a way of counting things because uh, there are some, such a large number of atoms in any given particular substance. If I took this soda can and and wanted to count the number of atoms in it, it would just be a, a, a huge number. And I don't like dealing in huge numbers like that. Uh, we kind of already do this. Usually when I go to the grocery store and buy some eggs, I don't sit there and say, I buy 12 eggs. I don't say I buy uh, 144 eggs. I say I buy a dozen eggs or a gross of eggs. In case you didn't know, a gross is a dozen dozen or 12 twelves. So hopefully you learned some non-chemistry today. You can uh, go through and, and use a mole as a way of counting atoms or counting groups of atoms. So what exactly is a mole, a number wise? So if I have one mole of a particular thing, uh, how many atoms do I actually have? Instead of atoms, I'm going to say particles because sometimes we don't deal with like an actual atom. We deal with a molecule, a combination of atoms bonded together. So I'm just going to say particles. It, the number you're going to be looking for is Avogadro's number. Avogadro's number is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. If I am going to go through and say, oh, okay, how many atoms of a particular thing do I have if I have a certain number of moles? You can go through and say the same thing about a dozen things. Let's say I have 24 eggs, right? So I have 24 eggs. I want to know how many dozen eggs I have. How many dozen eggs do I have? What I need is some kind of relationship between number of eggs and dozen eggs. And that relationship, I think everyone knows, is for every uh, 12 eggs. Oh, let me just write this over here. 12 eggs is one dozen. Hopefully you can see there's kind of a similarity here. I have a certain number of particles is one mole. A certain number of eggs is one dozen. If I'm wanting to go through and convert, if I'm wanting to go through and turn eggs into dozens, what do I need to do? Well, uh, remember, units are just like variables in algebra. If you multiply two variables that are the same together, you get that variable squared. If I multiply egg and egg, and if I multiply egg and egg and put them together, I would get egg squared. If I put dozen and dozen together, and I would get dozen squared and so on and so forth. Uh, 
the other thing that you might remember from algebra is that if you have uh, something on top and something on bottom that are the same in a, in a ratio, you can cancel those things out. So we can actually cancel units out. If I divide egg by egg, we can uh, cancel egg out. So if I'm going through and I'm looking at my starting units, which is just egg, egg on top, nothing on bottom, and I'm wanting to get to dozen, dozen on top, nothing on bottom, then I'm going to somehow need to drop the egg. Don't drop the egg. Sorry, that was a bad joke. So uh, bad yolk. Drop the egg. That means it's going to be on bottom. Whatever I'm doing, I'm going to divide by egg. Egg goes down here. And I'm going to multiply it by dozen equivalent statement here the these two things that are equivalent 12 eggs is one dozen 12 eggs is one dozen one dozen is 12 eggs i have one dozen and 12 egg i had to set it up like this because i needed to change my units to go from egg to dozen egg is on bottom so i need to have 24 divided by 12. 24 divided by 12 is 2. So we know it's going to be 2 dozen. Uh, some of you might be wondering, what, what about this? Well, this is what you multiply by. So 24 times 1 is 24 divided by 12 is 2. That is going to be our, our process to go through and figure out moles to particles or moles to atoms, except instead of this equivalent statement, 12 eggs and one dozen, we're going to use this equivalent statement here, which is Avogadro's number, you know, particles per mole. Th that is going to be our first step. So let's go through and just put this into practice. Let's say I have uh, three moles of helium. Okay, three moles of helium. And I want to figure out how many atoms of helium I have. So if I have three moles of helium, I need, remember I need to drop the number of moles, so that's gonna go on bottom. I need to pick up atoms or particles. Okay, and now I just need to remember that equivalent statement, which is Avogadro's number, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd, particles per one mole. So I know that one mole is gonna be on bottom. I chose it to be on bottom because I need to cancel out and then atoms. Now I can double check my work. This is pretty simple, but later on when we're doing dimensional analysis, we can string a bunch of these guys together and we wanna make sure that our work is correct. Let's go through and double check. Moles cancel out. It's on top and on bottom. Atoms cannot cancel. Helium cannot cancel. So we have atoms of helium, which is what we're after. So we go through, and now we can plug and chug. 3 times 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd divided by 1 should get us a number. Let me grab my calculator. It's going to be 3 times 6.022e to the 23rd. And that's a really big number, so let me switch it there. Okay, let me go through and do this again. Uh, if I was in a hurry and I was doing this super quickly... And, and I get a number that it cannot possibly be. Looking at this number, you know, 4.98 e to the negative 24th. e to the negative 24th, that's a negative exponent, which means it's less than one. I did a calculation here and it's less than one. And I go back and I look at my, and I think that, that number is not right. That cannot be true. I can't have a fraction of an atom unless we're dealing with nuclear chemistry, which we're not going to get to. This is a big warning sign. And you go back, look at your calculation, 3, point, or, uh, three divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. You can say, okay, I did that. What was my actual dimensional analysis? Oh, okay. I, I, I should have multiplied here. I did something wrong. I went back to my work that I showed. You can see w exactly what you did wrong. Uh, it's always a good idea to go through and do that. That is um, 
how you go from moles to atoms. The other thing that you can do, uh, you know, th that's great, but how do you know how many moles you actually have in a particular amount of a substance? I can't, there's no mole instrument that you have. Uh, there's no no uh, counting atoms instrument that you have, or at least something that is freely available. Uh, but you do have something called uh, a, a scale, like a triple beam balance, or just the digital scale, or any of these things. These are freely available. We can figure out the weight of things pretty easily. We can figure out the number of grams it is. How does that help us? How are we supposed to go from grams to moles. Again, this is where we can go through and look at work from the past that other people have done to kind of help us along. We can look at the periodic table. So the periodic table has lots of information on it, but let's just take carbon for example here. Carbon has a atomic weight of 12.011. 12.011, that is 12.011, you can even see it right there, 12.011, that is grams per mole. So let me go back and write this down. 12.011, this is grams per mole. Just like if I say miles per hour, if I said 30 miles per hour, what I'm actually saying is 30 miles per one hour. This is 12.011 grams per one mole. We have 12.01 grams per one mole. This is you're going to be your equivalent statement. This is going to be that ratio you're going to use to convert between grams and moles. If I have 12.011 grams, I have one mole. If I have a different number of grams, I can use this to figure out how many moles we have. Let's set up that dimensional analysis chain again. Let's say I have five grams of carbon. And the big thing here is just remember those algebra rules. I need to somehow take carbon unit and turn it into moles of carbon. So I have carbon on top. That's great. I'm not going to mess with carbon at all. But I need to get rid of grams. If I need to get rid of grams, I need to drop grams, dropping grams. So I need to put grams on bottom. That's one mnemonic I always use is drop grams. So it goes on bottom and I need to pick up moles. So I need to put moles up on top, pick up moles. Now that I have this kind of set up, I can check my units, grams cancel. I'm left with moles of carbon, moles of carbon. We're good. What is next? So now we have to go through and actually put numbers into this equivalent statement. We already have it set up here. So we just need to remember to keep these the same. Uh, don't uh, just write 12.011 on top always. It's not 12.011 on top. It's 12.011 grams. So wherever the grams is in your equivalent statement in this ratio, you need to put that 12.011. So 12. 011. And then it's going to be one mole. When I say equivalent statement, what I'm saying is both the top and the bottom are the same. They're equal. If I said 12.011 grams, that's just like saying one mole of the thing. Just like if I said 12 eggs is one dozen eggs, that would be an equivalent statement. Now we can just go through and plug and chug. 5 divided by 12.011 divided by 12.011. And there's our answer, 0.4 moles of carbon. So that's how you go from grams to moles.